You are a child of God and love and God loves you. He cherishes you and he values you so, so much. And so do we. And we're so glad that you are part of our family. We're so glad you're joining us on Hope Today. It is Tom and I, Amy is off today. And we are going to be having a really important conversation about children. Yeah, children. <laughs> oh, you love them. <laughs> you know? And then they make it crazy too. And it does, <laughs> sort of doesn't end even after they're adults. But you know, our responsibilities as parents, it really can feel overwhelming. I know I always tell guys, uh, it's like, I don't know, the women seem much more ready than the guys do. I don't know. But you know, uh, but uh, you know, when it comes to prayer, how do we pray? How do we know what to say? How can we truly pray for our kids? Uh, rather than fall into some sort of spiral of worry. Well, Sharon Janes is going to be with us, and she's going to share how to pray specific scriptures over your children. She has got such a nice system. It's called Praying for Your Children from Head to Toe, and it is, it is going to be so encouraging to you to learn uh, just her, her way of uh, bringing the scriptures alive for our kids. I think that is so beautiful. So whether if you have children of your own, you have grandchildren, great grandchildren, I think it is so important that we pray over our children. You know, Tom, I have friends that they've told me about, like dear friends about motherhood and just the challenges and the hardships. But one thing I'm just so proud of my friends is how they are just bringing Jesus into their lives and helping them to understand how important it is to have Jesus in their, their hearts and to walk into that. So just not even just going to church and having them in an environment, but also like praying at night and talking to them and making them understand how valuable they are to God. You know, it's funny because I was nervous as anything at the prospect yeah. of being a dad, really, I was. I mean, I was like, I was never around small kids because all my siblings and me were all like born in, within mm -hmm. four years of each other. So we were all like the same age growing up. So I was never around young kids. And I'm like, what do I do with this baby? You know, it was like so, so challenging. But it was wonderful and, and wonderful. I love being a dad, still love being a dad at, at, and a granddad. But there's a challenge to it as well. And, uh, you know, we don't want to uh, spiral into worry. We want to make sure that we, Sydney, you know, just really entrust our children to God. It definitely, and it's such a blessing, you know, for the parents that are out there that you have such a responsibility to pray over your children, to lead them in the ways of the Lord. And so even we just want to encourage you today that maybe you are a mom or a dad or your grandparent, and you're just struggling a little bit. We want to give you our prayer line that you can call at any time at 888-665-4483 so we can encourage you as you are walking along the process of raising your kids in Jesus. Absolutely. Please pray with our prayer partners as they pray for your children because children are a blessing from God. They're such a precious gift and we always want what's best for them, including praying for them constantly. If you're a parent, I know you've been praying for your children. Well, Sharon James is our next guest and in her book, Praying for Your Child from Head to Toe, she shares powerful and effective prayers that will both bless you and your children tremendously. Sharon, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here today. Well, let me ask you about that topic. What was, well, how were you drawn to that topic of praying for your children? Well, actually, about 10 years ago, I had another book come out called Praying for Your Husband from Head to Toe. And it's really about covering, it was about covering your husband in scriptural prayer. And moms kept saying, you've got to do this for children. So that's how that came about. And as soon as I had a child just like you, I'm like, now what do I do? What do I do? And so I, you know, began to pray just like you did. And sometimes my mind would wander and I, and I, I think, oh, I've got, I've got to call this person. Oh, I've got to get back. Sorry, Lord. I'd get back to praying again. And then there were times where I just did not know what to pray. So I started praying scripture. You know, we talk about covering people in prayer. So this is a pattern of prayer to cover someone in prayer from their mind and what they think about all the way down to their feet and the path they take. You know, when Jesus' disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, and he taught them what we now call the Lord's Prayer. I don't think he meant that to be a rote prayer, but really it was just a pattern of prayer. We praise God, we thank God, we pray for him to meet our needs, confess our sin, we praise him again. So this is a pattern of prayer that helps us to cover someone from top, the mind they think about, all the way down to their feet. Yeah, and we're going to go through that in just a minute. I wanted to ask you, as you talk to parents, as you talk to mothers, dads around, what are their top concerns for their children? Well, you know, we only have to look at the nightly news to see what some of those concerns are. I remember reading this statistic that 
There were 51 school shootings last year, 167 since 2018. I mean, when do we even start counting that? So parents are concerned about that. They're concerned about what they're seeing on the internet. The You know, we ha always had peer pressure since there were two people on earth, but now the peer pressure is just exponentially higher because of what they're seeing on the internet, which is leading to depression with kids and suicide being the second leading cause of death uh, for adolescents and teens. So they're concerned about that. They're concerned about um, the stress the kids are under. They're concerned about what they're seeing on the internet and their on their cell phones. They're concerned about depression. They're concerned about um, gender confusion. So we're going to pray for all of that. And those are some of the concerns. But here's what we do know. And you guys know the scripture tells us that we are not fighting a, a battle of flesh and blood. And yes, there is all out warfare for our children today. But our battle is not against flesh and blood. It is a spiritual battle that we're, we're fighting against the devil's scheme. So if we're fighting a spiritual battle, then we need to fight it fight it with spiritual weapons. And that is the word of God and prayer, kind of like nitrogen and glycerin. You know, it says that we have power to demolish strongholds through prayer. And that word demolish is dunamo in the Greek, which is the language of the New Testament. And that's where we get our word dynamite. So nitrogen and glycerin come together. You have dynamite. We got prayer and the word of God coming together. And we have power to demolish strongholds. Well, let's get right into it then. What are the 16 areas of prayer? I know you've got them uh, again from head to toe. So let's talk yeah. about that. Maybe you could unpack a couple of those for us, a story or, or uh, about how God has shown you this particular area. Okay, so we do start at the top. We're starting with the mind, praying for that child's mind. And when I'm talking about the child, I'm talking about from birth, through empty nest and then in, into college. So we're praying for their mind. When our scripture says, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. So as parents, we a lot of times pray about behavior for our children, but what if we could step back a little bit further and pray for their thoughts in their mind before that behavior, behavior occurs? So we're praying for the mind, what they think about, because we know that ultimately what they think about will determine what they are about. So praying for their mind. Then we're praying for their eyes. We're praying what they look at. What they look at is different from what they see. And they might see something. We can't help that, but we can pray about what they look at, what they focus on, and what is entering their mind through the portal of their eyes. And then we're going to their ears, what they're listening to, who they're listening to, not true. Then we're praying for their mouth. And that are the words that they speak, praying that they will speak life and not death. So, in the Bible, but it, you know, that old saying, monkey see, monkey. Yeah. Well, we're seem, praying for them. We seem to be having a little bit of a, a, a trouble with the connection there. So, we'll, uh, uh, you know, Sydney, there's a, a quote I really wanted to get Sharon to comment on uh, that I just thought, I thought this was so key. And she has it as a full page here. Prayer is not a means of gaining control over our children to whip them into shape and make them the men and women we want them to be. Prayer is a means of relinquishing control of our plans and asking God to shape our children into the men and women he wants them to be. What do you think of that? Well, I just think of, you know, I think of like when you have your children, I think about my mom and just like when you raise your children and then if they become 17, 18 years old and then you're releasing them out into the world and just really sometimes how that anxiety, that fear of just knowing what could happen in their lives. And so I think it is just so important that I love the point that Sharon was making about praying for the eyes, praying for the ears, praying for the mind. That is so important that I know like my, there was prayers. I know my parents were praying for me when I was out in college and just doing doing different things so I could walk in the ways of the Lord. So I think that is so necessary for us to pray. Pray for your children. I'm saying like us, I don't have any children yet, but it's so important to pray for your children all yes. the time. Yes. Yet. That's right, yet. <laughs> all right, Sharon, I think we have you back now with a good connection. Yeah. So uh, we have- Okay, we, great. We got, you, we, got a, we got to the mouth. I think we were about yeah, okay. you know, to the mouth. <laughs> we almost got that head covered. <laughs> so we are gonna pray for their mouth and that is that the words that they speak will be pleasing. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. So we're gonna pray for the words that they speak. And 
Um, I also want to say, you know, we can pray about this, but they're going to most likely repeat what they hear their parents saying. So we need to make sure we're being good examples with the words that we're speaking. We're not grumbling and complaining, because if we do, that's how they're going to talk. So pray for the words that they speak. And then the neck, You um, earlier when we were chatting, you said this was an interesting, the neck. But the neck is what turns the head. So as we pray for the neck, we're praying for what turns that child's head as they make decisions. So this whole area is just about the decisions that they make. You know, I often think, you know, God was gave us the gift of choice, and that was pretty risky in the garden. I sometimes just want to just do exactly what he wants me to do and not have to choose, but that's not how we set it up. So we want to pray for our children as they make choices, because we know that decisions determine destinies and choices create histories, and that's whether it's their histories or world histories. Then we're praying for the shoulders. You ask, what are parents worried about? Children are worried. They are so concerned. They are concerned at a very early age. My four-year-old niece, I was talking about to her about her new guinea pig, and then she started worrying. Well, do, is my guinea pig going to die, and is it going to go to heaven? I mean, just worried at four years old. Um, but kids, as they grow older, their worries and concerns get larger. And it's, we're not we're not praying that they're not going to worry, because they are, but we're praying that they'll know what to do with it when they do have those worries, that they they cast all their cares on to the Lord for he cares for them. And the shoulders, we think about carrying the whole weight of the world on our shoulders. So we want to teach them and pray for them to give that to the Lord. And we're going to pray for their heart. This is who and what they love. We're going to pray for their back. And their back is their spiritual and physical protection. So we're praying for the physical realm protection. We're also praying for the, the spiritual realm for protection, that, that that God's angels would encircle them, that God would surround what's surrounding them. We're going to pray for their arms. And in the Bible, we see that the strong arm of God, we see that strength many times is a symbol symbolized with the arm. So we're going to pray for that, that they'll be strong physically, emotionally, and physically. Then we're praying for their hands. We're going right down, praying for their hands. This is their gifts and talents, that they'll discover what those gifts and talents are and then develop them to, to glorify God. We're praying for that ring finger from the time our children are born. We need to start praying for those spouses. And I want to say here too, that as we're praying for the spouse, we're praying for that that godly, that child to grow up with um, and, and come to know the Lord and mature in Christ, whoever our child will marry. I want to mention here that we're going to be praying for other children too. And um, Sydney, you mentioned that you don't have children yet. We can pray for other children because I came to Christ through a praying mother, but it was not my mother. I was raised in a very difficult home with a lot of, there was alcohol and pornography and fighting. My parents fought physically in front of me. I saw things that kids should never see, but there was a mother on the next block for me, my best friend's mom who started praying for me when I was 12 years old. And she told me about Jesus. I started going to church with them and saw that there were people that talked about Jesus like they knew him personally. And when I was 14, she sat me down and asked me if I was ready to accept Christ as my savior. And I, he, I did, and he forever changed my life. But not only that, both of my parents in a six year period came to Christ an amazing story I don't have time to go into, but just to say, yes, I became to, I came to Christ because of a praying mom. It just wasn't my mom. So as we're praying for children, we can use this to pray for any child, especially those children that are coming in to our children's lives, which takes us to the next, land, next landmark, and that is their side. That is who's walking side by side with them through life, those influential relationships. We're going to pray for their sexuality. We're praying for sexual purity, and we'll pray that there will not be gender identity confusion. And this is straight from scripture. It's not my opinion on any of this. We're just going to pray straight scripture because we know when we pray the word of God, we are praying the will of God. Next, we're going to pray for their legs, and that is what they stand on, that they'll stand on the truth. And they're going to have to have courage to stand on the truth in a world which is not standing on the truth, which is saying something's legal one day and 
well, something's not legal one day and then legal the next, something's true one day and not true the next, which we know is not truth at all. So they're going to need to be able to stand on the truth throughout life because we know if you don't stand on the truth, the world can be a very, very confusing place. And that undertow of uncertainty can can pull them out to sea with the riptide of questions um, in this, this shifting culture we live in have changed. And then we're going to pray for their knees. We're going to pray for their relationship with God, that they will come to Christ at early age and they will mature in their relationship with God, that they'll be humble before God. And finally, we're going to pray for their feet. And when we get to their feet, this is the path that they take. Again, they start making decisions very early. And we're going to pray that they make decisions that their feet, their feet will keep them on the path that God has laid out for them. So that is truly covering someone in prayer from their mind all the way down to the feet and the path that they take. And I want to say this too. It might, it took us longer to explain it than it does to pray it. So <laughs> it might seem kind of like, oh, I don't have time to do this, but it takes about five to seven minutes right. to go through these prayers each day. Yeah, you have it set up and you have you have those different areas in there and you have the, the, the a scripture for each one of those and a little prayer prompt. Let me, let me ask you about the, the quote that I shared with Sydney uh, when we were having a, that uh, little bit of a problem with the, uh, the connection. But that, that whole thing of relinquishing our rights of what we want our children to be rather than trying to pray and to conform to what we think. Could you just speak to that and what that really means? Now, this is a hard thing for mamas. I just want to say that because <laughs> we have those little children and we think we know what's best for them. And and um, many times we are praying and the prayers sound like we're trying to create a little mini me when that's not God's plan for our children. He has a unique plan for each child that is born. And so when we, we say, when I say that we're relinquishing control, we are praying and we're saying to God, Lord, you are the potter. This child is the clay. You have entrusted me for a very brief period of time with this child, and not only that, but this eternal soul. And I'm going to mother this child and teach this child what what I want, what I can teach them about you. But ultimately, you are the potter. This child is the clay, and we need to be praying that this child will be exactly who God wants him or her to be, not who we necessarily want them to be. And that's what I mean by relinquishing control and and praying that this child would be conformed to the image of Christ and not some image that we in our minds want them to be. I think that word relinquish is such a freeing word in relation to uh, trusting God with our children. Uh, Sharon, would you take a moment? We just have about a minute left in the in this conversation. Would you take a moment and just pray for those who are watching, those parents, those moms, those dads, those grandparents that care and love so much uh, and want the best for their children, uh, but are are in many cases sometimes they're frustrated. And and uh, would you just pray for them? I sure will. Lord, we thank you so much for this time that we can come together and pray for our children. Lord, sometimes it, we get so discouraged as parents when we pray and we pray and we don't see the results. But Father, I am so thankful when Jesus tells us that you are always at work, you are always at work, and you are working behind the scenes even when we can't see it. So we praise you for that, Lord Jesus. We praise you that you were working behind the scenes. Lord, I pray that we will not get discouraged when we don't things see things happening quickly. I also pray that parents will not get discouraged when their children struggle. Lord, I think about my, my own life and how most of my, my spiritual growth and maturity came during times of struggle. So, Lord, we do not pray that our children will live a life of comfort and ease, but we pray that in every struggle that they have, that you will work, do the work that you need to do in that child to make him or her the man or woman that you want them to be. We would give these children to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The book is called Praying for Your Child from Head to, do to Toe. A 30-day guide to powerful and effective scripture-based prayers. Sharon Janes, thank you so much for being with us and sharing with us today. Thank you. Well, I would, uh, again, recommend the, this book to anyone. And uh, just stay with us. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to be sharing with you.
No matter your age or circumstances, God wants you to move forward. Join best-selling author and teacher Dr. David Jeremiah in a masterclass, revealing how to live fearlessly. You'll discover that it's never too late to find your purpose. Dr. David Jeremiah reveals powerful ways for people of any age to live a life that's meaningful. Inside Forward, you'll uncover strong Bible teaching coupled with incredible real-life stories and practical biblical insight. Learn how God wants to expand your dreams, give you divine direction, equip you with tools to overcome fear, and much more. Request your copy of this life-changing book when you support Cornerstone Television. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Find airtimes for Turning Point with Dr. David Jeremiah at ctvn.org. Donate and request his book, Forward. Thank you for your partnership with Cornerstone TV. We're glad you're joining us on Hope Today. And as you heard earlier in our show and our program, that Cornerstone Television Network, we have an initiative. It's a 21-day prayer journey. And it's our focus today is day two of it. And it's praying for confident belief in God's word. And we just want to encourage you that you can go to our website at ctvn.org slash journey. That's ctvn.org slash journey that you can get your free guide so you can walk through with us every day. And today our scripture comes from Isaiah 55 11, And it says this, you're probably really familiar with it. And this is a good one. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Tom, this is such a powerful scripture. What are your thoughts about it? Well, and, and I love this and I've got mine all printed out here, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, but I, I like this, you know, praying for confident belief in God's word. Listen, everything in our modern society will array itself against the word of God and cause us to want to doubt the word of God, want to not believe the word of God. Listen, the word of God is tried and true. It's a solid foundation for you to stand on. You need to trust the word of God. So it's, it's great to pray into this, mm -hmm. that we remind ourselves and those around us to stand with the word of God. Because like, I mean, we know that everything, even you know, our kids going back to school, praise God for the wonderful teachers and the classes they have, but there will be something in their school curriculum somewhere that is just the opposite of the word of God. And we have to stand and believe that God wants us to trust his word. And so we need to pray that for our children, pray that for uh, ourselves, pray that for our community, that our communities will even stand for the word of God. You know, sometimes I know a lot of times as Christians and believers, we talk about the word of God. And but the one thing I even think in scripture that recently just been highlighted in my spirit is that God says he magnifies his word above his name, that there's such an importance on the word of God, that the word of God is true. The word of God, we can stand on it when we're walking through adversity, when we're walking through trials and we can believe it and hold on to and say, God, this is what your word says. And we can tell God like your word says this. And these are the promises that you have over my life. And Tom, one teaching actually like um, Bishop Clay at Petra International Ministries like recently did and has just been sitting in my spirit and it is like, I, I'm taking this up and I wanna give this truth and revelation that he shared with us to you is that, you know, we talk about the armor of God, you know, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit. I just wanna start with the sword of the spirit. And he was just talking about, if you look down in, um, when you study in the, the, the Roman culture, they would take the sword, it was a little dagger and they would use it to take out the darts. They would use it to take out the things that were, you know, the, the things that the enemy has like thrown against them. And, and the same is true with us is like he was saying that you take the sword of the spirit and then you pull out those woundings, but you know what you do, you speak the word of God. And so it's like, you know, no matter what hits come your way, take that sword of the spirit, take the word of God. And no matter what those woundings may be, no matter what hits may come, you take it and you just start speaking the word over your wounds and you speak and declare the promises of God. And you, we can, t this is a perfect scripture, <laughs> Isaiah 55, 11, to speak over yourself and trust and believe that God. He is not a man that he should lie nor a son of man that he should repent. If he has said it, will he not do it? And that's what we have to hold on to that truth today. Oh, absolutely. And in fact, I, I, heard, I heard this scripture so often in King James, it says that my word will not return to me void, okay, or empty as it says in the NIV. 
What a, a tremendous promise for us to trust in as we pray. Again, as we were talking to Sharon James, she was talking about praying these scriptures for our children. What a tremendous way of praying is, look, we can just pray and pour out our heart and that's fine. And we can pray and pour out our list of what we want God to do. And that's fine too. That's not a wrong thing. Sometimes people speak against that, but it's not really a wrong thing to pray that, that out. But boy, when you get a hold of the scripture, and what God wants to, uh, he, he reveals in the scripture what he wants. And when you pray that, that will not return void. You're sending out those prayers, sending them to God. You know, I have a, people say this all the time. I have a little thing about this, Sydney. People say, sending prayers to you, you know, on, on Facebook, they yeah. say that. Sending prayers to you. Not exactly. You're sending prayers to God and you're sending the answer. He's sending the answer to them, okay? It's not just good vibes we're sending to someone. It's the thought uh, God is getting involved. God is the one who's gonna take this situation that you're going through, that they're going through, and transform it according to his word. You know, one practical thing that you can do, and I've done this recently, is just in the place where I like like to pray, I write down scriptures every, like I write them down and I have them hanging up. And as I'm like spending time with God, I will just literally just say his word and I'll put, insert myself into it. Cause it just helps faith arise. And it reminds me of who God is and what he has said about me. You know, you are a child of God. For those of us that are in Christ, there's things that we can stand on. His promises are true. And sometimes they get tested. Sometimes Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you're like, God, where are you? I thought you said this, but I'm telling you, when you hold on to the word of God, when you speak it over yourself, when you declare a thing, it shall be established. It is amazing that God has given us a mouth. Just think about this for a second. He gave us a mouth. He has a mouth that we're able to come into agreement and to trust and believe the things that he wants to do in our lives. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm big uh, on a, a scripture about foundations. And uh, Jesus said, are you going to build your house on the sand? Or are you gonna build your house on the rock? It says, when the storms come, it didn't say if the storms come, it says when the storms come, you know those storms are coming. You know those storms are uh, around the corner. I don't want you to be fearful, but you know that this happens in life, that there are storms, Jesus even said so. If your house is built upon that rock of relationship with Jesus Christ, and I don't know any better way to have a relationship with the Lord than through his scripture, but, you know, I, I just want to make sure one thing. Do you have that relationship with the Lord today? Have you made him Lord of your life? I don't mean, did you go to church? Did you read the Bible? I mean, have you opened the door of your heart and said, Lord, come in and be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. I've sinned against you, Lord, but you died for my sins to be paid. And, and come and be the Lord and Savior of my life. If you haven't prayed that, Open your door today, uh, open that door of your heart and say, Lord, come in. You know, it's not a religious thing. It's not something that you have to do every day, but it is something you have to do to be born again and to know him as Savior and Lord and to know the purpose you have, he has for you in this life. Have a great day.